Hi everyone, today we are going to be beginning how to set up our MIG machine. Here we're using our Millermatic 252, but if we were to use our Tweeko, the one that's right over there, very, very similar setup. So first off, we need to make sure that we have all of our equipment. So this is what our Millermatic 252 looks like when it's fully broken down. You can see right here, this is our gas cylinder, and this is going to be our MIG machine. Over here, we can start to see some of our supplies. So right over here, this is gonna be our wire that we're going to plug in to give us our power, our ground wire and clamp, our torch, our wire spool, our wire clip, our three quarters of an inch wrench, our Creston wrench, our gas hose, and then our gas regulator. So this is what it looks like fully broken down. By the end of today, and hopefully later on in this week, we are gonna be able to fully put this together so that we can MIG here shortly in class. This is the face of our machine. You can see that we have our volts and our amps. Down here below, we have our on and off switch, and then also where we're going to actually connect our torch, we'll go through here, and then also our little black piece will connect right here. Step one is going to be connecting our ground wire. Here, we're gonna have our ground clamp. This will clamp to our work table. And then on the other side of that is going to be our actual ground cable. So you can see right here, it has that little piece that we're going to connect. Over here on our MIG machine, you can see a little bit better on the inside. Right here, this is going to be where we get our main power. It's going to be red. On this side, you can see there is a black piece and there is a nut and a bolt. That bolt, this is where we're gonna actually connect our ground cable to. I've already loosened up my nut and taken it all the way off. And then we're ready to actually connect. So what you wanna do, get your ground wire. We're going to take it and the front of the machine, there is a hole you can see right through here, right where my hand is. We're gonna pass this all the way through, making sure that it's oriented in the correct way. You can kind of tell because the top of our flap, that black flap is going to be on top. You're going to place that bolt through the hole and you're going to take your nut and you're going to tighten it down all the way. When you have it pretty tight, you're going to take your three quarters of an inch wrench and you're just going to give it a tiny, tiny turn to the right to tighten it. You don't want to over tighten this so that when you are taking apart your machine or doing this again that you're going to be able to. After you do that, take your black flap and you're going to make sure that it's over our ground wire. This is going to be essential to make sure that it's fully running correctly and so that we're grounded so in case we do have an accident or something happens that electricity is going to run through our ground wire to the work table or workstation and not through us as humans. So on the other side you can see our wire in our ground clamp. If we were already ready, we would make sure to put our ground clamp onto our workstation so that ground electricity goes to the ground and not to us. For step two, we're gonna take our gas regulator and we're gonna connect it to our gas hose. Our gas hose looks identical on both sides, so it doesn't matter which one you put into the gas regulator and then which one you put into the machine as long as they are hooked up correctly and properly. So what we'll need to do is on our regulator, we're gonna find the side that has a female adapter. We'll take our gas hose and we're just going to first tighten it in by hand. Once we have it pretty tight, that's when we're going to take our Creston wrench and we're going to make sure that we use our Creston wrench to tighten it all the way on. Once again, you don't wanna over tighten anything on these machines because the more likely you are to over tighten, the more likely that it's going to be to break. So you're going to tighten it just a little bit and then our gas regulator is connected to our gas hose. That's step two. For step three, we're gonna take our gas regulator and connect it to our gas cylinder. We can see that step two is completed, our gas hose connected into our regulator. Over here at the regulator, you can see that we have a male adapter. We'll take that, place it into our gas cylinder female adapter, and we're just going to tighten that in once again, first by hand, and then we'll use our Creston wrench. This is the one you wanna make sure is decently tight, but once again, not to over tighten, so that you are going to make sure that no gas is leaking. 
if gas is leaking, that's going to be something that can be really detrimental to your shop in case there was ever an emergency. We're going to take that Preston wrench once more again and do a turn, making sure that it's nice and tight. Not too tight though. Once we're done with that, our gas regulator is fully hooked up to our gas cylinder and that's going to be step three. For the next step, we're going to take our gas connector or our gas hose and we're going to connect it into our actual MIG machine. So you can see here, I had a lot of extra hose that I wrapped around my gas cylinder. This is just to help to make sure that there's no loose hoses laying around so people can get hurt, trip, anything like that. Right here on the back of the MIG machine, you can see that there is a female adapter that we're going to plug our gas into. This is on the back of the machine, looks pretty similar across all machines. When you're ready, you're going to take and screw it in, much similar to a lot of what we have done so far today. One good thing to note about this is you don't need any Teflon tape. That's what some people do. I uh, won't need Teflon tape just in case we are going to be breaking down this machine for ever, any reason. We'll take our Creston wrench once again. We're going to go a little bit, tighten it, not over and tightening it. And this is just going to make sure that we seal that so that our gas can flow regularly into our machine and that we are all good. That's going to be once again connecting our gas hose into our actual Millermatic 252 MIG machine. We're ready now to connect our wire spool into our MIG machine. Here on the inside of the MIG machine, this is going to be uh, where we're going to place our wire spool. And this is going to be our wire spool clip. You'll notice here on the sides, if you push those two knobs, they go in. That's going to allow you to clamp it or to open it up. Then when you release, it'll hold it in place. So when you're ready, you'll take your spool. And you're going to notice that there is a opening right here. On your MIG machine, there is a little spindle that you want to make sure that it is going to hook onto. That's just going to make sure that it's being fully in place so that you are ready to go. When you are ready, you're going to take your spool, you're going to lift, connecting it on, making sure that that little piece is going to be hooked in there. Then take our clip and clip it into place. You'll notice there are two notches on your actual machine that you want to clip that in and then you'll release and our wire is now good to go and connected. Over here you'll notice that I hooked my wire into my actual wire spool just so that it's not going to be releasing. If this wire to were to unroll it would be pretty bad and really hard to get back rolled up so this is something that I always do make sure that it's connected until I'm ready to actually roll it in. For this next step we're going to be connecting our torch into our machine. First off, I want to go over some of the stuff that's inside our machine. Right here, these are going to be our rollers. Right here, when we actually pass that wire through, that's what's going to allow that wire to be fed through into our torch. There's a knob right here that I want to make sure is loosened right now. This is how I'm going to be able to get the base of my torch actually into this little hook and nook right here so that that wire can be fed all the way through the torch. Parts of our torch, we can see we have our nozzle and the actual torch head right here. On the other side, this is going to be what I called as that base. This is what actually hooks into the machine. On the other side, this is a little black cable that we will hook into the base of our machine or the front of our machine as well. So first thing we want to do is we're going to take this bottom part of our torch and we're going to pass it through that hole in the front. And you can see where it's hooking in right here. You're going to go until you're just at that top line. So you should see there's not too much space in between that torch right here and where our rollers are. That knob now I'm going to tighten it down so it's going to hold it in place so it can't come out. This is what that inside looks like once again. When we're ready to feed our wire through, we're going to open up those rollers and I'll show you that process next. We're now going to take the black piece of our torch and we're going to hook it in. You can see right in here, there are two prongs. We're going to connect onto this bottom one right there, you can see. It takes a little bit of uh, moving around to find that exact perfect spot for it to fit in. Once it's fit in, you're then going to tighten down that top, that screw piece right here. 
until it's tight and it won't wiggle, won't come out. Once our torch is attached into our MIG machine right here, it's time to feed our wire into our torch. What I want to make sure that my rollers are open and how you do that, this little black handle, pull down and that releases the roller. I have undone my wire from my spool just so that I can actually physically turn that wire and it'll come out. You'll notice right here though that there is a notch, so a bend. We want to make sure that we use some pliers, and here I have MIG torch pliers, that we're going to just snip off. This is going to make sure that we do not have any of that bad material or that bend into our torch because if we do, then our torch can actually, or the wire can get stuck in the torch, which isn't good because it might not actually feed all the way through. When you're ready, you're gonna pull your wire and there's a little black piece right here. There's a hole, we are going to go through that and you can start to see that our wire is coming out in between, there's a little track that'll go through. I'm going to stop there, connect it in place, and now I can see that my wire is being held there. So it's coming from our wire spool, and it's going to be held right in front of my torch. I am just going to release my roller, and I'm going to feed my wire into that wire torch. You want to make sure that you're making that wire is actually going into the torch. You might need to use a finger just like this and allow it. So you can see it start to slide in. You want to do this only for about three to four inches. And then you're gonna close that roller. After my wire's been fed into my torch four to six inches, I've gone in and plugged in my machine. I've also spread out my torch so it's all the way straight. When I'm ready, I'm gonna flip the switch, turn it on. You can see that machine start to come to life. When we are ready to fully feed that in, Want to make sure that torch is straight. And what we're going to do is pull the trigger. I can hear that wire starting to move. That wire is getting close to the front. So I'll keep going. And we can see that wire has now come out. We have successfully fed that wire all the way through our torch. And we are going to be ready to MIG weld here pretty soon. So this is what the inside of the machine looks like. When I pull it, that trigger with it on, we can see our wire is coming out and our spool is spinning. If we ever didn't want to just clip this off with pliers, if we're trying to save our material, what we can do is unclip our rollers and spin our wire spool the opposite way. So you can see there that that wire is actually getting so shorter in our torch tip. So we want to pull it back just until we're right about, probably about a quarter of an inch out so that when we're ready to MIG weld, we'll be good. Just make sure when you do this that you want to close those rollers back up so they're going to be ready when you actually pull that trigger that it's going to keep going through.